Hello, third graders. Uh, we are ready to go through our unit four review. Uh, this unit has actually gone kind of quick compared to some of the uh, other ones before it, but uh, we're ready to review those things. Remember, this will be kind of a longer video um, with lots to do, uh, but then of course there's not going to be a math journal page for you to do. So this video serves both purposes. Make sure you have a, a notebook or a dry erase board and a marker um, right by you. All right, we're gonna start with measuring line segments to the nearest half inch, right? The unit. So when we say to the nearest half inch, some people think that, that, that there has to be a half in the answer, right? Like three and a half or six and a half. But if you measure to the nearest half inch, you could also just have, you know, the answer of one, okay, or six. Okay, so it doesn't have to have a half, but it can when we're measuring to the nearest half inch. So I have our ruler here, we're gonna bring it up. Now, what you should remember, right, is that we need to make sure that we start the line segment right where the the beginning of where the zero is on the ruler. And this this ruler doesn't have a zero written down. Okay, but you know where that is because if you start it way over here, then it's going to to throw off that measurement. So watch as we line this up here. Okay, and then we're going to look down over here at this other side. And we can see here's four, here's five, right? And so this one is halfway between those. This answer would be four and one half inches. Okay, now let's, uh, we need to use the same ruler here for this guy down here. Let's bring that down here like this, okay. So if we look at this measurement, well, this one's going to be a little bit weird, okay? So we can see, it, it, is it closer to one or one and one half? Well, a little bit closer to one and one half. You know, if the ruler, and I can change my ruler size, right? If it was right here, then the answer would just be one. Even though it's we're measuring to the nearest half, this one it would still be closer to the one if that were the size of the ruler. Okay, so um, a little bit hard to do here online, but uh, if you have a ruler at home, that's something you can, can definitely practice on your own. All right, our next problem, uh, next topic that we're gonna talk about is line plots. Now, you remember that a line plot is different than a bar graph, right? The line plot's going to use the X's, just like we practiced in that lesson. So here's our number of books read over winter break, and here's the number of students. Oh my goodness, somebody read one. Somebody didn't read any books. That would be sad. Uh, so we want to make sure that we know how much is each one of these is. So this is one. This is, let's see, five, ten. How much is that? How many, how many people read two books? Seven and three here. So what we're going to then do is come down here to our line plot and fill those out, right? So if one person had read zero books, we put one X here, not a bar, right? We don't fill that in. Then we're gonna put 10 here. Seven, eight, nine, 10, woo, that's tall. And seven here. And how many are going to go over the three? Three, right? Because of this number right there. Okay, so this is our line plot. We could then uh, answer questions with that, and we don't have any questions with that. But you might be asked, um, you know, how many books did the person who read the least read, right? And that would be zero. How many people read the most books? Well, now be careful here because some people, oh, this is the tallest one, so this is the most. But no, these people only read one book. How many people read the most books? Well, that's reading three books, right? Three people read three books. So, the, you know, this is also called the minimum. This is also called the maximum. But that's a common question that you'll see sometimes about line plots. Before we move on, let's review. How is a line plot different than a bar graph? 
All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna look at our shapes. Dominic is playing what's my polygon rule. He places his polygons this way. So two of his shapes fit the rule, whatever the rule is, and one of them does not fit the rule. And we want to know what could Dominic's rule be? So look at these shapes. What did these two shapes have in common? that this one does not. So for example, let's say, okay, these both have four sides. Well, this has four sides too, so that's not his rule. What's true about these two shapes, but not this one? Okay, it has to do with the right angles, doesn't it, right? Here we have one, two, three, four right angles. Remember that a right angle, let's use the line tool here, looks like this. It's also can sometimes be called a square corner, right? And so this shape has four and this shape has four. How many right angles does this shape have? None, zero, nada, nothing, right? All of these are not right angles. None of these angles on the inside, right? Look like this. So what could Dominic's rule be? Well, we wanna use a piece of the question. His rule, could be shapes that have four right angles, period. Explain how you know the square and the rectangle have four right angles, but the rhombus does not, right? Look at that, right? So we use a piece of the question, we write a complete sentence, and we write a second complete sentence to explain. All right, here we go, number four, more shapes here. First, let's make sure we, we know these shapes. What's this shape? That is a trapezoid. How do you know? Well, look at the top and the bottom, right? See how these are parallel, okay? It has one set of parallel sides because these, are not parallel, right? They're gonna meet up there. That's a trapezoid. This is a parallelogram. It looks kind of like our rhombus. Our rhombus up here has four equal sides, right? This side is the same length as this side and this side and this side, okay? This one's uh, a little bit stretched out, right? It's just called a parallelogram. How are these shapes alike? Okay, they have, uh, some people might have said four sides. They are uh, quadrilaterals. They uh, have at least one set of parallel sides. This has two, one, one set, and this has two. So they are alike because they both have, we'll go with four sides, four sides, period. All right, capital and period. How are they different? All right, look at those two shapes. How are they different? Okay, one is a trapezoid, one is a parallelogram. Um, one has, what else could we say here? Um, one has one set of parallel sides, one has two, right? Don't just say that they have different names. Okay, you need to be able to explain that one shape is a trapezoid and the other is a parallelogram. All right, so we talked a lot about shapes and polygons. Remember, these, these are all polygons. They have all straight sides. They don't have lines that cross. Uh, and these ones on this page are all excuse me, all quadrilaterals, right? Quad means four, they all have four sides. All right, number five, trace the boundary of this shape, then write the perimeter. Remember to write the unit. Well, you really can't trace here on your screen, so you're gonna have to watch me, right? So the perimeter, What is the, what does that word mean, perimeter? Perimeter is the distance around the shape. So perimeter is this. 
That's the perimeter. Perimeter is the outside. We know area is the inside. So we need to find the perimeter. We know that each side is three feet. So what do we need to do to find the perimeter? We need to add up all of the sides. When you want to find the perimeter, you are adding all the sides. So three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Plus three. Right, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 18 feet. Okay, explain how you found the perimeter. Well, they give you a lot of lines here. I don't think we need all that. How you found the perimeter. So we'll start with I. I found the perimeter by adding up all the size. The answer is 18 feet. Okay, that is what we did to find the perimeter. Perimeter is the outside. You add up all of the sides to find the perimeter. All right, which names could be used to name this shape? All right, so look at this shape. It has six sides. So let's go one at a time with these. Is this shape a hexagon? Yes, it is a hexagon. Hex and six, right? Remember uh, that those both have an X in it. So hexagon, it is a hexagon. Is it a quadrilateral? Let's go look back up at it. Is that a quadrilateral? Nope, quadrilateral has four sides. Is it a polygon? It is a polygon. It's a polygon because it has all straight sides. It's a closed shape. There's no extra pieces, no crossing. So this one is also right. Is it a pentagon? Is that a pentagon? No. How many sides on a pentagon? Do you remember? There are five sides on a pentagon, right? So a regular pentagon looks like home plate if you've ever played baseball, right? There's a pentagon. All right, number six, find the perimeter and the area of the rectangle. Is this the last page? Wow, this has gone fast. There will be several on the test similar to this question. All right, well, that means it's important. So we want to find the perimeter and the area. So for the perimeter, we just talked about it. We're going to go around the outside, right? And we're going to, to, to count as we go, right? So to find the perimeter of this shape, we're going to trace the perimeter. This is, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this side is six. So what is this side over here? It is also six. Okay, six centimeters, right? We know we're in centimeters here. Now we need to do the top and the bottom. You tell me. How long is the bottom? It is three centimeters, right? So three and three. What is the perimeter of this rectangle? Well, six plus six equals 12. And three plus three equals six. All right, I'm adding up all of the sides. Now I can put these together. 12 plus 6 equals 18. Okay, if you didn't say 18, either two things are possible. Either you didn't add up all the sides, right? Maybe you tried to just add two of the sides, or you didn't add them correctly. Don't try to do this. Don't try to stack them in a giant stack like that. That rarely works. Okay, break them into groups, right? These groups and these groups, or Add two and then add two again, right? Don't stack four numbers on top of each other. All right, now let's find the area. The area is the inside. 
right? The area is the inside. So what is the area of this shape? Okay, the area is 18, which is kind of funny because that was uh, the perimeter as well. Okay, the area is 18. Why? How did you find the area? How did you find what was in the middle? Okay, there are two ways. The first way is to count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you will get to 18. The second way is to think of this like an array, right? It is six rows and each row has three. So six times three is 18. Okay, it's not very common that the area and the perimeter are the same. Okay, so, you know, don't, don't expect that in the future, but sometimes they are. Let's do another one with the area and the perimeter. So let's take this right here and we will say, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, this side is four inches and this side is 10 inches. And if we have to find the perimeter and the area, okay, now I'm gonna tell you people, uh, when they're finding the perimeter, sometimes people know, okay, a perimeter is add. So 10 plus four is 14, but that is not the perimeter. Why is that not the perimeter? That doesn't, take care of all of the sides, right? That's only two of the sides, but for a perimeter, you have to find all of the sides, right? So we're not gonna stack these numbers, 10 plus 10, and then four plus four, and then add those two pieces. What is the perimeter? The perimeter is 28 inches. 10 plus 10 is 20, four plus four is 28, and though four plus four is eight, and those equal 28. All right, the area, now there's no boxes in here, but we can imagine that there would be 10, so there would be four rows, one, two, three, four, and each one would have 10. So if we think of it like an array, we could count all the boxes, but that kind of gets long after a while, but it's a good strategy, and you should do that when you're doing your test to check your work. But we could also do four times 10. So what is the area of this shape? The area is 40 inches squared. This little two right here means, is, is, is how we show that we're talking about squares and not just length. All right, last problem down here. Okay, several parts here. This is our rectilinear shape. Remember, we did that recently, right? It's like our swimming pool, okay? Uh, and we were going to try to find the area, or we could find the perimeter of this, okay? And so what we want to do first is to divide this into two rectangles, right? And once we do that, then it's not, as, not, not too bad, right? We just now have to find the area of each one and then be able to put them together. Okay, so the area of this one, I could count all these, one, two, three, but I'm gonna count how many rows there are, one, two, three, four, five. So now I know that I can do three times five. What's the area of this big, bigger rectangle? The area is 15. And what's the area of the smaller rectangle? Should have said eight, eight square centimeters. So we can fill in these answers down here. One rectangle is 15, one is eight. And so what do we need to do to find the total? Well, it tells you right here. We're gonna add those up. So what is the total area of that whole shape? 23 square units. All right, third graders, these are going to be the topics that are covered on our test coming up. You'll see uh, different polygons. You will see area and perimeter, and you'll see some of the other topics that we covered here today. If you have any questions about any of these topics, uh, be sure to let me know. These are things that you can practice on your own or look for videos um, that might help you. If you're kind of stuck or confused about part of this, I encourage you to do that if you um, feel that that's something that would benefit you. 
All right, third grade. That's all. Good luck.